rain all over the camera and covers in the background. So let's go back to uh, some one-day cricket. Uh, in days gone by when uh, Zimbabwe were here back in 2000 and 2001, you might remember some of these old boys playing, like Craig McMillan's in the mix. Oh, that's a huge blow again. Just picked it up and smacked it away, wide of it on. Four more to Alistair Campbell. Full toss, and he'll get punished for this as well. Outstanding timing, and this is a run feast. Four overs, 40 runs. What did he do? He's across the line, and he slaps it away. Back with a square for four. Well, I think New Zealand are at a point now. They've just got a, that's an effort at a slower ball, and Madondo picked that up, that it was, in fact, an off-spinner and has just hit with the tide. He might be caught here, and that's brilliant. Roger Toos. Shorter pace, slower, got through the shot just a little bit early, and Toos running to his left effort to get there with two hands oh, and the celebration and Madondo gone for 12 Zimbabwe 47 for one smack through and he's caught a wicket that is first over Sinclair the catcher and that's a big blow Campbell goes I think this looks uh, an excellent catch from Matthew Sinclair in uh, sort of extra cover position. Not quite getting there, Campbell. Hit it powerfully and away to his left. Two hands. That was the key. And there's the little celebration for the young man. New Zealand pulling it back. Campbell's gone for 28. Big strike rate there for him. Two for 48 Zimbabwe. <laughs> confident that that was going to beat Roger Tuz in the off, big chase. Well, this could be tight, a good throw. Good judgment of the third run from Carlisle and a no ball to boot. Oh, what a shot that is. That's beautifully timed. Martin is only 20 metres from that, can't get it. Well, he didn't get close to getting it. Boy, this one's come off the bat very quickly. He's almost cut this down through the gully region. Very hard. And Chris Martin's only got about 15 paces. And he's not even going to get close to it. It's too short and too wide. Now, uh, not perfectly timed. Harris as well. Nathan Astor who turns the chase in vain but that was uh, a little ray of sunshine almost for Chris Martin if that had a start the mood would have been a lot, a lot better Carlisle put everything into it the bat twisting in his hands it's all just centimetres away Martin knew uh, he'd got that it would have been a good uh, come back to the bowling crease that's another chase for Roger Tews, but that's just a, a token gesture, beautifully timed. And now Chris Martin has another problem, and so does his captain. 84 for two after just 13 overs. Don't let him drive either through the covers. That is a magnificent shot. Fleming was at short cover. He entertained the thought of stopping this, maybe even catching it, but he had no price. He's a hard guy to bowl to flower. Doris overcompensating the ball before, which was short. Flowers onto it, very good. Open, he opens the, the blade up on the point of contact to get it through the field. He doesn't even bother running. He concedes for dropped it short. And that has uh, cost his side 
Another boundary, 92 for two Zimbabwe after the 15 overs. It's through. Chris Harris not finding his length yet. And it's uh, just trickled over the boundary line. Chris Harris over the last year or so, Gavin, I think has started to drop the ball a lot shorter. He's got a lot slower through the year. He bowls only leg spinners now. And a lot of batsmen around the world are waiting on the back foot and picking him off. Again, drifting into leg stump, Chris Harris. Steering with his line early on here. Three runs will result. Now then. Well, when I saw the stroke, I thought he's going to pick up two here. Times two because he knew exactly what he was doing. He, he kind of wrapped it onside. Look at that. Knowing there was no one back. Deep backward square, long way to go. Imagination of Andy Flower. He's got the reverse sweep, the one that goes the other way as well. Oh, full toss. And that will test square leg. No, it won't. It'll only test him. And then he's got to bend down and throw it back. Four more for Flower. for Andy Flower. Tremendous performance once again. Six fours and 65 fours. Beautifully controlling this situation. He's a class player, isn't he? There you see he's just pacing the balls to, uh, to fielders. This sweep and uh, how good is that? Straight away, Harris is greeted by the reverse sweep and he goes to the boundary. Let's try it again. That's two out of two. Fleming is going to have to plug the gap down there and put a man down, uh, well, virtually a third man. Gonna try it again, and he's uh, slapped this one away for another one. Well, it didn't really matter that uh, Stephen Fleming put a player admittedly inside the circle, and Dud didn't stop him at all. Straight back, and what a blow from Stuart Carlisle. And at the end of 30 overs, Zimbabwe sailing along. Nice, Piggy. And that's a very well compiled 50 for Stuart Carlisle. Associated with Andy Flower in this huge partnership. And hasn't he batted well? Down the leg side, and that's uh, away. And just bounced inside the line, I think. Yes, it did. Loose delivery from Styrus. Carlisle's been there long enough to cash in. Over the top, and uh, nobody home down there. And just inside the line, I think. Big blow by Stuart Carlisle. And they uh, go to check it. But with the naked eye, just inside the line, I think. Yeah, I think that lady's got it right. It's uh, just landed inside the rope. Mid on and mid off are up. Just inside. Another indication there. Down the ground. Andy Flowers back again for two. Just put yes! the close. Yes! Direct hits. And Andy Flower has not even stopped. He's heading straight towards the changing room. Direct hit from Chris Martin. Marvellous throw. Andy Flower, one quick run, too many. Chris Martin got the ball in the air very quickly there. And the direct hit here will give it away. Andy Flower not even in the frame. 
big wicket for New Zealand. Zimbabwe 203 for three. Here we go. And there's another boundary. This is a very, very good cricket shot. This isn't a slog by any means. It's picked up the length, the short length from Astle very quickly. Have a look here. Good feet position, full follow through. And he's hit it very well. Race to the boundary. Gone. Caught by the captain at mid off. Ordinary delivery just straight up there. And Carlisle hasn't got over this one. He's gone for 76. Straight to the captain at mid off. Skimming catch up McMillan. Wanted to get a little bit more loft on that. Perhaps wanting to get it to extra cover a little bit more. However, picked the captain out, he's gone for 76, and Zimbabwe now 211 for four. Right in, angling in, he's given in, and uh, Dave Quested, this time the noise, convinced Quested that that one was going to hit the stumps. Let's have a look now on the sky track, it's angled in again, much, much further up. And I think that's hit on the toe on the full. Yes, I think it did hit him on the toe on the full. This will show. Yes, boom, straight on the front toe. Very, very straight middle stump line. Only question would be, was it drifting down that leg side? By Quest Ted said, no, it was straight. And McMillan said, yes. I would have gone for two. It's 217 for five. Rennie. Tucking it down, it's a good stroke, and just defeats Fleming. Come on, Scotty! Biggest chase now for Styrus. And uh, three runs. Oh. Well, a bit of luck here. Kevin Rooney gets a bottom edge, I think, and it races down for four. It's a good stroke from Rennie. No one at uh, long on at all. The mid wicket was fairly square, so a good target area for him. Thank you, Douglas. Oh, that's good cricket. That is brilliant one day cricket. A stunning shot. It's predetermined, but uh, the execution outstanding. He showed signs, didn't he, in Wellington, Morelia, that he could play this game at this level. And the way they've invented some of these shots today has been quite outstanding. I mean, you sit at home with your kid on the couch and say, son, don't ever play that. And then it goes to four and say, well, why not, Dad? Oh, it's going to be run out here. It's one of those things that happens in the one-day game. He wasn't quite sure where the ball had gone. He did the right thing by looking for a single, but in the end it fell easy for Franklin. Now, I think Morelia had to go here. I think he made the initial step. That's why Rennie took off, and I think he would have kept up with Franklin, who then had to pick up the ball and run it through, and he would have had the outstretched bat. As it was, he sent Rennie packing, and that's where he's heading. 262 for six. And he could pick up another. He's picked up the wicket of Marillia, caught by Martin in the deep. So a big over for New Zealand. Well, remember the basin when Chris Martin got one of these? <laughs> he would have been thinking about that just the other day, but not this time around, and James Franklin will be delighted. I don't know if that was a great option. I suppose if it had gone for six, we'd be singing his praises. But two wickets in the overs, and Bar, we didn't need it. He lines it up in front of the eyes. Ah, yes. Safe as a church. Marillia goes to 24, 265. It's a big hit. My goodness, that's a big hit. And that's a poor effort. Huge hit down the ground. He streak, he just lined it up, he gave himself just a little bit of space, a half a shimmy out towards leg stump to free his arms. He made very good contact. 
It's a big, big boundary. And this is an unfortunate soldier. And again, holy cow, he's gone again. See you later. <laughs> Heavens above. All of a sudden, six balls to go and he streaks. Not only found the middle of the bat, but he's found where row 25 is. Yeah, car parking row. Big hit again. And Scott Styrus has got him the wrong. Now, I think these two guys are in a partnership here because look at the reaction of the guy behind him. I think he was back up thinking, I'll get the rebound. And then, no, how much have we blown here? So Zimbabwe asked to bat first by Stephen Fleming. They did the job very well indeed, didn't they? They got through to 300 in their 50 overs. 46 for none after five overs, 92 for two after 15. Two brilliant catches there, one by twos, one by Sinclair. Tried to pull it back from New Zealand, but a third wicket partnership of 155 between Andy Flower and Stuart Carlisle. That's the highest ever for any wicket against New Zealand. Turned the tide Zimbabwe's way. Flower was brilliant, reverse sweeps and placement. Carlisle played a great supporting role then launched himself. Rennie and Marilia put on 45 for the sixth wicket. Streak iced the cake, 20 from Styrus's last over, which was the 50th. So seven for 300, amazing score. And none of those bowlers really will feel too happy about their effort. Seven bowlers used in fact in the first 23 overs. That was the predicament Stephen Fleming found himself in. McMillan and Astle probably the best combination that he found. Cairns limped gingerly through three overs for 24. Chris Martin went for just under eight and over. Styrus went for six as a big hit display from a uh, streak in the last over from him. That really hurt his figures. And Franklin on debut was okay. Five overs, no maidens. Two for 28. Chris Harris, a pasting. Great news back here at Owen Delaney Park because uh, the umpires have agreed play should start right now. 43 overs now New Zealand have to get 281 to win. They started off, they would have started off needing 6.02, it's now 6.53. So the delay has favoured Zimbabwe. They have to have three bowlers bowling nine overs, a maximum of nine, two a maximum of eight overs. And the fielding restrictions now apply for just 12 overs. Matthew Sinclair on strike. And uh, along with him is Nathan Astle. Time to get upstairs to uh, our first commentators as New Zealand go after this very steep target. 6.53 per over. They need 281 and 43 overs. Here's Willie Watson and Grant Nisbet. That's uh, Port. And that's the end of Matthew Sinclair. He needed to get on with the job, and he hasn't been able to do so, and so he's gone for one. Well, regulation dismissal uh, caught in the slips. Probably didn't have the width to play the expansive drive. Got an edge, and a good catch by Alistair Campbell. Comfortable height for him. He'll be pleased to get in that. New Zealand lose their first wicket for two. Fleming's worked this nicely away, and this could be the first boundary, yes it is. Fleming is so good through that square leg, mid wicket region, and he comes up with the first boundary. Picked it up beautifully, and uh, over the fence. No, nope, it bounced. Fielding results in a boundary. Won't be happy with this as the bar we saw. They pride themselves in the field. And a little bit of an unlucky bounce, bounced up. Oh, Murphy gets another. And he lets that one through as well. Well, he looked to be done by the bounce the first time. And uh, let's see whether he's done by it again. Wow. There might be a few words said now from uh, the bowler. That's still at this stage probably only thinking of the single. And nothing wrong with uh, that bounce. Usually a good uh, safe fielder, Murphy. Didn't have a chance. That's pretty close. In fact, that's plum. 
It seemed to stay down a bit, and uh, not much doubt about that. Well, this is the class of this bowler. A misfield didn't affect him at all. In fact, it made him try harder. And he came and he bowls very quick. Astle back. I don't think he uh, has too much to complain about that one. Evan Watt can give him. He doesn't normally give too many. If you, he gives you, you're normally out. New Zealand now 24 for two. That's a delightful shot. Beautiful drive straight down the ground. That's beautifully timed. Guys racing away. It's a dampish outfield. But it'll get there. I think it did. Uh, I think it did. There will be a stewards inquiry, so hold on to your tickets for this one. But I've got a feeling the ball is on the line as he makes contact with it. Oh, there. Thank you. And in the back of his mind, he knows the boundary options as he picks up his first one tonight. Any angle away from the left-hander means he can free the arms. And again, didn't quite get this one, but it will test. And that is brilliant. It pulled the best out of uh, Guy Whittle on that occasion. And Brian Murphy in pursuit did well too to try and make up some of the lost ground. But this is great work. Third umpire wants to see it again. We all want to see it for a different reason because it was so good. Clearly stopped. And Murphy did well in support. Yeah, mighty blow. One bounce. He's got a reputation for not handing the short ball at test match level. But on the one day, he just peels this off. I think he dispelled some of that actually in South Africa when he took to Donald and Cluzen on a regular basis. And they peppered him around about the waist and chest area. And he learnt how to play this shot pretty well on South African pitches, which are quicker than this. And that's a mighty shot to hit it that far and that square at that rate of knot. I'll tell you, it's a shot of a man in form. Yeah, big over. Huge over. Roger Two's on fire. And Travis Friend is something to ponder. 60 for two. Oh, great stroke. Stunning stroke play. Toos can hit square, but Fleming hit straight. Like that. And this is going to be worth sticking around for. Well, it's just freeing the arms to another area of the park, though, isn't it? Oh, it's in the air. a magnificent catch by Strang running around to his left and in as well Roger Toos the danger man is gone for New Zealand looking to play a big expensive pull shot he's got a top edge a wee bit quicker we were just talking about it slid off that top edge and Strang running I would guess about 20 to 25 meters and diving and hanging on to it that's the key to that and uh, Roger Toos is gone for 27 from 20 deliveries. New Zealand 72 for three. Two stroke from Fleming. It's made good contact. Oh, he's bowled him. Straight through. Kept a little low again. Whittle. Big blow that. Well, it's just gone straight through. Chris Cairns is defensive. Defences, and that is a big, big blow for Guy Whittle and for Zimbabwe. You see just angling in. Not a lot of bounce. Two-thirds of the way up the stump. Chris Cairns trapped on the back foot. And Chris Cairns is on his way for five. New Zealand 88 for four. Well a wee bit of good fortune about this but it's four runs <laughs> 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 
slower ball. And, oh, he's pierced the gap and it's gone through. Stephen Fleming, this one on the offside. Well, there's the equation required by New Zealand to win this match. 25 overs remain for them, 177. Just a shade over seven runs and over. They're going at, well, nearly sixes. And Travis Friend, the bowler, coming in for his fifth over. Well, that's real power. That's the first real blow of belligerence that we've seen from Craig McMillan. Beautifully played by Fleming, and that's a half century for the New Zealand captain. You wouldn't say it's the happiest little raising of the bat, would you? Because he knows full well it's a, a job not even half done yet. That's a very high, and it's going to trickle its way to the boundary. Now this is going to be taken, yes it is, took an age, so they won't need the runner because Craig McMillan goes. Well he just hit it too high, he hit it well enough but he hit too far under the ball, he wanted to go down the ground as well as up into the sky and you can just see he hit that and he knew straight away it was never going to clear the fielder. All he was praying for at this point is that Doug Marillia would put it down. Prayers for McMillan's sake, unfortunately, were not answered. Marillia holds on to it very nicely indeed. He goes for 18, 118 for 5. Shot. First boundary for Harris. Hasn't been able to find the middle of the bat. And again. Action replay. This time it's not a deflection. This is off the middle of the bat. So Friend doesn't go unpunished. Three boundaries from the over. Down the ground, these uh, two men there. Madondo, beautifully played there. He had to run about 15, 20 metres to his right. Head down, Fleming, not happy. The option of taking on the uh, deep men was a poor one. And he hardly hit it with one hand. Madondo in the end, didn't have much to do, a couple of paces. Rid of the New Zealand captain, New Zealand 151 for six. Beautifully placed, Harris. It's only around 50 metres there, and it was a full toss. Down. That was a catching chance, a definite one. He kicks the ground, Brian Murphy. That would have been the end of Adam Perori. 164 for six. Straight up in the air, and uh, that will be taken, I would imagine. Yes, it is. Really simple catch, uh, waist high, full toss. Brian Murphy put one down off his own bowling, but he held on it onto it for uh, Doug Marillia, and Perori's on his way. Well, it all looked a bit soft, that didn't it? Hip high, full toss. You'll see it here on this replay. From Marillia, Perori looked to swing it away, looking for the boundary, over the boundary just lobbed a gentle catch to Murphy and Adam Perori disappointing with his four and NZ 164 for seven catch. big hit is it far enough yes it is big blow from Scott Styrus that's six more of those that's what's required good flat hit but a very strong one well, that's what he's known for. He's a big, strong fella, Scotty Styrus. And he got a lot on that. Not a lot of height in the shot, but a lot of power. And he's repeated the dose. Has he? Not quite. Good catch, Brian Strang again in the deep. Scott Styrus looking for the rope again. He's on his way. 
And New Zealand lose their eight. Didn't quite get the timing, more of a clunk on the bat rather than the sweet spot. And Brian Strang, who was cleared first time round, was in perfect shape for the second. Styrus goes for eight, 180 for eight. This has gone high, this should be caught, and they've held another one. And that's the end of uh, Chris Harris trying to hit the ball into the grandstand. And uh, the catch is taken by Carlisle, and Harris goes for 37. Well, he decided uh, to have a go at Murphy. Try and put him into the stand, Chris Harris. Just got a uh, top edge, which went very high. But uh, it's not often you see uh, Zimbabwe drop their outfield catches. They got rid of Harris. New Zealand now 182 for nine. Nicely down the ground. So that might just about run away. Well timed shot. Well played. Clipped it away back with a point for four. <laughs> Look at that. That's a lovely shot. And uh, for the record, that brings up the New Zealand 200. He's got this one through too. Sprawling save out on the boundary, fails, and uh, Franklin hits another four. Just might uh, rate himself to get it over their heads. Well, you're right, Twilly, but uh, he's uh, come up short, and the game is all over. Zimbabwe have scored a most convincing victory. They have beaten New Zealand in every facet of the game. So set 281 from 43 overs in a revised target. New Zealand always up against it when they lost Matthew Sinclair and Nathan Astor very early on in the piece. Good partnership for the third wicket of 48 between Twos and Fleming. For Twos was brilliantly caught by String, which caused a little middle order collapse involving Cairns and McMillan and Perori and Styrus. And then Stephen Fleming was out as well. There was very little fight in the tail apart from young James Franklin, 25 from 27 deliveries. Chris Harris too, 37 from 39, but it was never enough as the asking rate got higher and higher. Top all-round bowling performance from Zimbabwe. Streak, two for 26, one of the best. So too Brian Murphy, the leg spin, a good control, and Marilia in only his second performance at the bowling crease in one day international cricket. Three for 23 bowling, some pretty gentle off-spinners.